do my makeup in somebody else's car. Hello there, Kim Hill. Hello there, Lordy Lord. I read a really good article in the New York Times about you. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, apart from anything else, it um, mentions your affection for a diner called The Flame in New York. Yeah. And I'm thinking they'll be pretty busy now. <laughs> I, I think wonder, you might have put them on the map. Huh? I don't know if they would even really be aware of what was going on. They're very much not... Um, that sort of place. It's not really, it's it's an amazing diner. It's like, I've never been anywhere like it. It's like a weird little magic paradox or something. What food do they serve? They do all the diner kind of usuals or the classics. They'll do a variety of egg dishes. They'll do sort of breaded chicken fingers, zucchini sticks. Um, chicken they fingers. They do a little side of coleslaw. Who knew ch- chicken fingers? Mm, like yeah. fish fingers, any chicken. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm so out of the loop. Nice for uh, the middle of the night. Good pancakes. Oh, well, of course, it's 24-hour open, isn't it? It is, yeah. Well, I'm still thinking you won't be able to go there undiscovered now. People will flock know, there looking for have, you. I might have blown up my you spot, have blown up, yeah. I think that's what happened. The other thing that amused me in that New York Times article, see, I've done my research. You have. Is that you, they say, wrote songs for melodrama on a remote island called Waiheke. (laughs) (laughs) Which I thought was really funny. Yeah. And they obviously think New Zealand's a bit like Iceland, really. So everything about New Zealand is remote, wherever it is. Yeah, no, I I did not call Waiheke remote myself, but. um, And even more. I did go to the far side, the. uh, is it the man of war side? The oh, the fire side. Yeah, the yeah. one that's not very popular. Man, they did remote. have a big and wild they dog have on wild there. dogs there, according to this article. It was a big, serious dog with no <laughs> collar, and I did send a picture um, to my mum at the time, right on my bed when I came back from a shower. I wasn't expecting it. Are you synesthetic? Synesthetic. <laughs> do synesthetic? you have synesthesia? I do, and it's a funny thing to talk about, and not really something that I. I sort of had it, I mean, I talked about it in that interview to sort of help describe um, something about the work and now everybody's asking me about it and they sort yeah. of feel... Sorry. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's a, just a funny thing to talk about because if I didn't have it, I um, I wouldn't believe in it, you know. It doesn't sound, it sounds so fanciful. Yeah. But it is real. <laughs> so when you listen to any song, you think of a colour or is it notes that make you think of a colour or chords? Um, it's sort of, it's how they correspond with each other. So a certain, um, a certain interval, uh, in a melody will, um, sort of present itself in a certain way visually and, um, certain lines of melody kind of present as different colors, but it's really not, um, it's not as sort of separate as I think people think it is. It's, it's almost like, for me, it's sort of these, um, I almost see it as like clouds of color. They sort of hang in the air, in the way a gas would, if it was, um, if it could be visualized, you know, and 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 they move, and there are, um, you know, breaks in it, and it may clear, and it may come back, um, but it is, it's, it's a lot of colors and a lot of textures, and it's moving all the time, and it's coming closer to you and further away. Um, yeah, it's a it's a whole thing, really. Even when you <laughs> haven't taken the drugs. Even when you haven't <laughs> taken the drugs. <laughs> and have you had that all the time ever since you can remember? I have, yeah. And it, um, I, I sort of just um, thought that it was something that everybody had. And then I um, became much more aware of it when I started making music um, and realised I could sort of use that as part of the experience of making music, you know, um, to bring a colour closer or to bring a certain... Um, Often um, with different uh, vocal things, they sort of, the texture is, um, the closest thing I can think of to describe it is like uh, f- like the grain on a film photograph. And those sorts of um, textures are very much things that I learned how to manipulate, you know, and bring. I want a little more grain in this moment, so I'm going to do this thing with my voice. So actually approaching the music from the visual side rather than the uh, oral side, which is a wild way of doing yeah, it, I yeah. guess, but um, pretty pretty fun. So Pure Heroine, your first album, is there mm. an overall colour that that had um, in your mind? That one, um, it does, it reads quite um, verdant, 
um, to me, I guess because, you know, he was making it like in the summer, you know, there are a lot of sort of green mountains on the shore. <laughs> a lot of, uh, I'd go to Fort Takapuna, which is like a sort of, there's a, there's a weird old fort there and a lot of old guns and very, very grassy and verdant. And I feel like that sort of became the uh, palette of the record. Whereas this, this one is very much um, violets and blues. Um, there's a colour called Egyptian violet. It's very much, and it's also um, a colour that the uh, painter Sam McInnes, who, who painted the arm cover, it's one of his favourite colours is Egyptian violet. So we really uh, bonded over uh, liking the same colours. Green light uh, made a very good impact. You must be happy with that. Yeah, I, f- I feel quite good. I feel like it sort of did everything I hoped it would do. You know, it sort of reintroduced people to what I was doing and a uh, nice little uh, shot in the arm. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it made me think of, you're too young to remember this, Fleetwood Mac's Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow. Do you know that oh, song? Oh, I am. That's, oh, it's one of my favourites. Yeah. The because it's it's a song what a, that what goes a, an amazing you know, comparison can thank yeah. you <laughs> i'm really sad we broke up and my heart's a bit broken but oh, it might be fun now also totally that is a, i never um drew the comparison with that song I, that's one of my favorites cool liberation you are liberated although that was <laughs> 2015 2016 you you had quite a few you know, breakups in that year. There was um, your boyfriend, mm-hmm. and there was your manager Scott McLaughlin, mm-hmm. and then Joel Little uh, was no longer your partner on on melodrama. There was yeah, a big change. That, that definitely is not. Um, no, that's not a break. No, no. I, Joel and I love each other, and we, you know, he he is involved in this record. It was just um, that one was very much a case of me needing to to go where the work needed me to go. You know what I mean? I had to. Um, put myself in the in the right room to be able to make it. Um, but, you know, it's I I'm, I'm feel very lucky that Joel is on the record in, in the ways that he is, and I, I know that we will keep writing music together for a long time. You and Jack Antonov mm. did a performance on Saturday Night Live of Liability, yeah. which is, um, which is a, a, a s- stern song. Like it's <laughs> stern. Stern song. But what did you have... You had things on the piano. We had our things. We had, um, well, so we wrote the whole album on that exact piano that we have on the stage. We um, we rented the exact same model and we took the front off um, the way we have it in the studio and we brought, I said to Jack, I think we should bring all of the things that surrounded us when we were making the work. So this really feels like, and that's pretty much how we wrote it. We, we would sit on that chair, although we'd be side by side instead of... Uh, Instead of facing away from each other, um, and so we brought um, we brought. I mean, there are you know framed photographs. There are I brought photographs some, of whom? Well, there's a photograph of uh, a musician called Robin, which has always been on Jack's piano, um, who I love. Is that uh, a before we met? Swedish? She, uh, yeah, she's a Swedish. Uh, right. She's a she's a wonderful pop musician. Um, and there's I mean there are plays. There are little sort of framed baseball cards that Jack had when he was a child. Um, there's a book that I love, uh, a collection called Self Help by Laurie Moore. Um, which... Oh, Laurie Moore. Oh, gosh. Yes. Isn't it just, isn't she? It blows my mind. So just does so she good. inspire some of your lyrics? Is that what you're saying? Or they were just there? Well, there was a line in Self Help that um, really spoke to me that I was reading. Um, you know, when you go through these sort of transitional phases, you look to... For me, I always look to books to try and make sense of what's going on inside my brain. And this line in this Laurie Moore story just reached out and grabbed me by the heart. And the line was, reclaim yourself. Pieces have fluttered away. And I was like, oh, that's what it is. And 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 so to, to go and write the song, which is very much about sort of learning to you know, be your own best friend in a way. I feel like it made sense to me to have that collection on top of the piano on yeah. Saturday Night Live. Do, have you met Laurie Moore? I have not. Oh, I would. I well, would she'll die. be very happy with the <laughs> shout out that you've given her. She's a great writer. Hi, beautiful, Laurie. beautiful <laughs> short stories. Incredible. Um, there's been a lot of pressure on social media for this new album, and I wondered how you coped with that. You know, it's been four years, and mm. you've been marinating it, and you. <laughs> Ducked down out of sight for a year or so, but still you've got this pressure from your fans on social media. Does that affect you in any way? Um, 
It does and it doesn't. You know, I think um, it was so present for so long. You know, there were just, there were years of people wanting it so badly that I think I was able to, um, you know, file it away. Um, But, you know, you are aware that this first thing meant a lot to a lot of people. Um, I mean, for me, I, it sounds crazy, but I'm just, I'm really in a room with myself when I'm making work. It's really about me being in conversation with this side of myself who knows what I am capable of. Um, and this, it's the side of myself that goes, yeah, everyone else would think that melody was fine, but you know you can beat it. You know you can push yourself. Um, you know, that that harsh critic, but also that part of myself that it's like a parent in a way that just loves me and knows what I'm capable of. So I feel like really um, the last couple of years have been very, very solitary and very much about being in conversation with that, with that person, you know, walking around my house, singing these parts of the record in these rooms um, and, and seeing how they measured up. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, I was aware of the pressure, but I, I was also not in a way. I was just thinking about you singing Liability on Saturday Night Live. Wearing, um, <laughs> your how would you describe it, Kim? Being <laughs> Miss Havisham is how I would. Ah, <laughs> cool. I would describe into it. it. I'm into is it. that what you were thinking of? I, um, I. It made me think when you were talking about being solitary. I thought, whoa, Miss Havisham, there you are. <laughs> well, I, I did. Um, I definitely, I said to my stylist, because I, I actually, I found both of those um, looks online that I wore on Saturday Night Live, and the first one was very much, you know, shiny and pop star, um, and I wanted this sort of very shiny, kind of streamlined look, and then this other look which sort of felt like the opposite. These sort so of, you wore sequins for green light? Yeah, I wore some, And then you turned like, into uh, Miss Havisham jewels. for liability? Yeah, I wanted yeah. to be, I was like a little attic moth. I think that's what I said to Ray. I was like, I just, uh, I love the idea of being swaddled in these sort of layers of, translucent fabric and just sitting on stage kind of you know my body sort of obscured like a little head singing these uh singing these songs it was pretty sweet uh liability because i mean i don't want to do this thing well what did you mean do you really feel that way but but it you know it (laughs) talks about how difficult being famous is (laughs) does it i mean I, I'm the last person to ever uh, complain to ever do a wow uh, about <laughs> being famous. I think it's like it's really tiring. I just for me like I um I just had to. I guess that was the framework um, for saying what I needed to say. But um, I think you can. I think I could have written that song not as a famous person would have made the same amount of sense. You know, I think only because I because people know what I do for a living, right. like. I think there are all sorts think, yeah. of ways of being a liability. You mean? Well, yeah. I mean, I I, I remember feeling that way at high school. You yeah. know, you, you walk into a group of people and you just feel horrible and like <laughs> you're punishing everybody by being there. The way you relate to the world is interesting. I mean, you've got the whole found images on Tumblr and songs on the SoundCloud and the kind of control you have over your career is is quite tight, but you also create a kind of intimacy with your fans. I oh. wondered whether you ever found that suffocating. Um, n- no, I um, I don't know if I if I do find it suffocating. I mean, they... I mean, you know, that you remember that line from "Where the Wild Things Are." Don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. They want to <laughs> eat you up. There is an element of that. I I I think that. Um, the way in which I have sort of, um, you know, I think with when you were in this position, you can uh, choose where to put the eye line to an extent. You know, I can choose where to direct people. And I exist in this very fortunate place where I can, um, you know, play at 9 p.m. on the main stage at Coachella, but nobody really cares what I look like walking to breakfast. You know what I mean? Like, I think that you can cultivate that if you want that if you want people to be outside the cafe um after you eat breakfast but I don't and for the most part um you know the conversation around me really does exist around the work which I you know have worked super hard to to build and obviously you know there are exceptions to that always but um no so for that reason I do feel quite lucky you know and also I think because I I do share a lot with the work I do um 
it's 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 an intimate place, and so I don't think that the young people who listen to my music feel like there's something they aren't being told. You know, they're like they're like we probably know more than we wanted to know, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's the um, the boundaries with it feel quite good. But I do get some strange uh, I get some strange letters in the mail. I get some strange uh, Instagram DMs. I uh, there are people with interesting fetishes who uh, like to reach out to me and tell me what they're. Uh, how they're feeling about me, but uh, How for the most part, it's, um, you'd be surprised what people can have fetishes about him. It's, well, uh, surprise um, me then. Well, uh, my cheeks, for one thing, my oh, cheeks on my face. Oh, they're pretty amazing cheekbones. No, but I it's get a strange that. thing to to really be into on a cheekbones. like a very uh, yeah, on a very no. intimate level. Oh, how intimate? Oh. I mean, listen, no, okay. I'll send over some letters. No. They're very spicy. Right. Cheekbones. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knew? I imagine that the video, the music video that you did for Disclosure um, with the magnets mm. uh, would have aroused a few people. Oh, listen, maybe. <laughs> well, listen, maybe. <laughs> I braced myself for a Disclosure just then, but nothing happened. <laughs> I mean, sex and violence, goodness me. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. It's nice to uh, to do weird collaborations every once in a while because I think you can, um, you know, you can do what you might not necessarily do in your own video. Would I have uh, set a man on fire in a pool in my own music video? Maybe not, but I did enjoy it for a disclosure song. Well, tied him to a chair, pushed him into the pool, I did, and then yeah. set fire to him. Yes, tied him Let's to a chair. Let's be clear right. here. Yes, sorry, mm. sorry for the. Uh, you mentioned Coachella. Um, which was a big deal for you, right? Coachella is huge. Huge, huge deal for me, especially because I hadn't played a show in two and a half years and my first one back was that show, which is like no small bag of, I've, I've lost the metaphor, bag stuff. of uh, Bag of stuff. It's yeah. a real bag of stuff, Coachella. Yeah, well, tell me stuff. about it for people who aren't familiar with Coachella. What is it? What goes well, on? Well, it's a, it's a three-day festival uh, in the desert in Palm Springs. It's, in two, it's over two weekends and... The, w- the way I can think to describe it is every single artist brings their absolute A-game. We all, you know, we're, we're musicians. We kind of, we kind of mooch around. We sort of, you know, we'll just get up there sometimes. It's not a big deal. Every single musician is nervous before they play Coachella. Every single musician is like, this has to be the best show. Because it really is, it's how we show the whole world um, what it is we're working with. And, you know, for me, like I, um, we we built this um, show that I am so proud of that, like I can really say that I built the entirety of that show. You know, from 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 the lighting design to the choreo to the set design to the to the visuals to the costume. I I I I, I I'm the showrunner there, and it was so cool getting to play Coachella and kind of seeing it affect people you know and seeing them understand it and grab the thread that I was sort of offering out to them it was this amazing thing of like oh it really can go from like being something I can only see in the corner of my brain to being this thing everybody can see and you know helps them get down with the music it was amazing you've got so much seems to me so much self-confidence now and your fans have got so much confidence in you that you can do whatever you want. Do you feel that liberation? I do feel very lucky that they are willing to come with me um, wherever it is I want to go and where I want to show them I've been. You know, I, I, I wasn't sure when we put out Green Light if that would still be the case or if people would have a little area that they were comfortable with me existing in and, if, and they were, you know, there was going to be a, a, an element of, no, 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 stay there. We, we need you to stay there. That's where we put you. That's where we want you. But, um, no, it's been, it's been so wonderful and I actually feel more kind of light and open and calm in, in the last kind of three months than I have probably in my whole life because it's just the most incredibly freeing knowledge you know to to know that to an extent you know people people want to want to go with you and 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 see the world inside your brain do you ever worry that people will you know if they bought into royals you know which was a a critique of excess really Mm. Mm. do you worry that people will see you as selling out 
Well, <laughs> when you write a song when you're 15 and, and you live at home with your parents and you go to school every day oh, and then your life changes. Clause. No, that's a good art clause. You know, I think like your life's going to change. I mean, my life would have changed I'm even not, if... No, I'm not suggesting that, that you invested everything into that song or said what you mean or even that you need to stick to it, but there will be some people who think, who loved you for that song. Right. Loved you for that critique. Right. And now, you know, I don't know, you're swanning around in flash cars and being really late for interviews. I am going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see about that on the side because I'm mm-hmm. sure that I was oh, not late. Right. <laughs> They're all shaking their heads in there, Kim. Oh, oh, oh. No, so I, ah, no, I, I, no, I, I haven't even mentioned the entourage. Yes, the entourage. <laughs> she's good. She's. Uh, I do bring some people with me. I. Uh, I, I do. Bring I mean, some I, I definitely with me. brought like five people with me. I don't know if that's like a crazy answer. Um, talking about the age thing, the, I didn't realise that there were a whole bunch of Lord Age truthers. Oh, yes, the truthers. Was that real? Was that a real um, thing? Like It was real, but I think it was uh, also rooted in humour. Okay. Like, but how could somebody funny. so young do this stuff? I guess I guess that's right. But also, I, um, I have a very sort of like old, strange face, which I don't think does me a lot of favours in the age truthing department. It is an unusual face. It's weird, huh? I wanted to um, get a small piece of goss in. Jack Antonov, who's now your musical partner, Mm. does he live with Lena Dunham? He does, yeah. So have you got to know Lena Dunham also? Very well, yeah. I actually knew her um, before I knew Jack. Oh. We were friends before Jack and I Uh, uh, started making music, yeah. uh, So that makes sense. I mean, how, that you and she, oh. no, 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 that you and she should be friends. That Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, yeah, I, I, um, we, we made the record in their house, actually, for the most part. Jack has a studio um, in one of the bedrooms in their apartment. And it was so nice to, you know, spend extended periods away from New Zealand and to be in this house where, you know, Lena is the kind of person, I think she, she's, like, she's like an old, old aunt. She's always kind of pressing a book into your hands, you know, coming out with some sort of charm bracelet she's, she says is, you know, just for you. She's she's wonderful. And he's wonderful too. And they complement each other so perfectly. It was uh, it was nice to sort of be wrapped up in that. You don't think she'll mind you calling her an old, old aunt? I think she would love being called an old, old aunt. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll stand to that. I think Ooh. she'll be into it. <laughs> so... Melodrama comes out June the 16th Mm -hmm. and there'll be, you know, huge hoo-ha about it. Are you (laughs) going to go somewhere quiet while the hoo-ha goes on? Oh, no, Kim. I don't get to go anywhere quiet. I have to go and uh, I have to go and do all the loud things then. That's when uh, this this is the quiet stuff. I have to go and uh, play the big shows and, and travel around a bunch. I go from America to Canada to Europe. I'm all over Europe for a second. I come home for a second. I'm in Japan. I'm um, I'm all over the place in a very short amount of time. Um, and do you think about that with um, relish or with a certain amount of exhaustion? Um, I mean, I like to think that I, between records, spend so much time um, staying at home and being so uh, stationary that you know this time is good for me although I do I'm I'm sad that I uh I've kind of missed the summer now haven't oh, I oh yeah of, but the cold set in you're in time <laughs> for the Fijos there's still the remnants of the yeah. Fijos oh huh? I gotta have a Fijo while I'm here I have lo- you not I'm, had one I yet I love a Fijo well I've only been here for 24 hours oh hurry up I haven't, I haven't passed by yeah. a Fijo I haven't plucked a Fijo from a tree yet. <laughs> no 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 you won't get those in New York no mm. I, I've, do you are they native uh New Zealand? Well, I think they hail from South America, actually. Oh, oh interesting. Huh. But I think we can call them native because, you know, they don't travel. They, they don't travel? <laughs> well, they don't travel. They just, they travel badly. R- ah, I see. They travel badly, right. They, they, <laughs> and so consequently, you, you probably won't get them in New York because they'll all be mushy by the time they got there. What I have to do is freeze a bunch. That's what we said. Ah. We scoot them out and we froze them. Now you're talking. Yeah. And if you were here in person... Yes. As opposed to somewhere else, and we're doing this tricky camera business. Um, I would <laughs> oh, have I forgot you... I was supposed to have been looking at you this yeah, whole yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm supposed to be looking at you. Sorry. Have you got a, have you got a cut out cardboard of me there? No, no, there's none. There's none. So I think I've, I've the, the, the whole eye contact thing's really 
it's been shot. It's, yeah, it's, but it's amazing what they can do. But um, yeah. I would have brought you a bottle of my Fijo chutney. Oh, man. All right. Listen, if I hadn't been late, Mm-mm. you might have sent it in the post. Yeah, but now you've been late, you don't get any. So next time we talk, we'll try and do it in the same studio and we can I'll exchange gifts. I'll be half gifts. an hour early and you uh, can give you'll me, me too. You can give me an expensive watch and I can give you a, a <laughs> yes, bottle of Fijo Yes, that's what I like to give gifts. I like to just <laughs> dole, dole out watches. <sighs> nice One to talk you. to you. Good you luck too. with the album. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking to me. I appreciate wow. it. 